How do, how do you even say that, Brian? Enki. Enki? What if I'm said wrong and people are going to comment wrong about no, it? That's alright. No one watches my yeah. videos. If like me, your first car in the early 2000s was a bomb from the 70s or 80s, you spent your free time, weekends and late nights upgrading and fixing it. Nowadays, cars are reliable by nature that we take for granted being able to jump in the car, turn the key or push the button and away we go to our destination without a worry. Enter the project car. When reaching middle age and your life is dull and full of assurances, wouldn't it be great once again to drive a vehicle with the fear of breaking down? But what if you don't like to live in a danger zone? At least you can spin spanners with mates, learn new skills, and proudly accomplish something productive. On the spot. <laughs> I'm not ready. All right, this is my 9091 MR2. I also call it the Mark II MR2. And it's the Baffers edition, which is um, the bare bones edition, basically. Like, it's the lightest, comes with the least factory options. Um, bought it last week on Facebook Marketplace for a pretty cheap deal, because it needs some things. I want to get it up and have a look at and see, because we had engine lights turning on and also some sort of charging battery issues so but it drove home creaky as all sorts um, so keen to get it up and have a look ended up having a quick look at these wheels uh, but they're Enki wheels from straight out of Japan love how there's the deeper dish on the back um, which really just creates that wider stance uh, probably keep the wheels on it actually I, I think it suits this color really nicely um, they just obviously need a bit of TLC just like the rest of the body pretty straight however there are imperfections here or there that show up really uh, noticeably being black um, noticeably this door here it's all straight and smooth but there's just lost a bit of shine there's something funny going on there so we'll see if we can fix that so these tail lights are not original um, so the previous owners must have put these on when they were much more affordable but they are the like rev 2 and 3 model tail lights a lot of people like to spend big bucks and upgrade them nowadays because they're pretty valuable. I think they're called the kooky tail lights. Uh, definitely more highly sought after than, than the originals. Engine wise, it's still running that stock 3S GE. Popular little engines from back in the day. But all I've done so far is just check the plugs and change the oil because it was very, very dark and tired. Pretty much what I've seen so far is that the previous owner didn't look after it the last few years. So it needs that TLC that we mentioned. One of my favorite things about this car is the good old Targa tops. Um, locks in, how do you even do this? Removable roof. Sorry. Also comes with a little sunshade underneath the glass, so then it um, completely blocks the sun. Um, they're in the back seat there, but yeah, I was very excited about getting a T-top. I uh, looked at one other MR2 before this and it was a factory sunroof option which is a bit less, less exciting than these ones. Now these are notorious to leak and especially this one does leak which I noticed because it was raining on my way back because um, one of the guide pins is missing so have to source that. <laughs> you can hear it flopping around. Funny thing about the windscreen, it's got a brand new one on there. It did get replaced during the week, uh, but leading up to looking and purchasing this car, a tree branch fell on the windscreen and smashed it, uh, which did help me uh, talk down the price. <laughs> um, but lucky it's just a standard windscreen, um, no fuss install from just the local windscreen place. Had them in stock. So nice new shiny windscreen. So interior wise, I think it's still in pretty good condition for a 33 year old car. Um, but Duff definitely needs a good clean and vacuum. This is exactly how I got it. I haven't touched it. And there's no rips or tears in it, which I think is a real big selling point to me. From what I can tell, it's all the original miles, which is 270,000 kilometers. All right, so we're gonna lift this up, take a look underneath, 
I know that there's a hole in the exhaust, so we just want to locate that and have a look at the cooling system because uh, when I popped the radio ca radiator cap off, it was pretty dirty in need of a flush. And, and yeah, once it is up, I want to look at this sway bar because I could see it dangling down uh, when I was on my hands and knees. Wow. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Completely sheared off. So the other side's still intact. Oh, wait. Oh, it looks like this one's about to go too. It's, it's cracked there. Oh, no. She's about to go. So I think we may, might need to weld that one back up. I did see online uh, when I was doing my little ring around there are some reinforcing plates that will help stop this from happening in future but the fact that they're already broken. This needs to bash up some sheet metal and weld it in which we should be able to do. Doesn't look like the most thickest of steel. It's very thin isn't it? Probably one mil there, maybe 1.2. Now, do these things usually rust? The Japanese versions do. So most of the Australian delivered, such as this one, normally are pretty rust free. But yeah, all the Japanese ones, full of rust, and it's the Japanese ones that are turbocharged as well. Doesn't look too bad under here. Gearbox doesn't look very leaky. And then the infamous exhaust. So somewhere around here we've got a leak. Um, the actual headers part look pretty good. These logs look good, but this looks pretty uh, done for. What are your plans with the exhaust? I don't want a loud car. I just want it to be reliable again, fun. So I will just get replaced for standard or maybe slight slight performance sounding but nothing loud such a short exhaust that like you know you delete anything from it it's just going to be screaming and screaming for attention i don't want that too old for that All right, now that we've had a pretty good look around the car, it's time to get stuck into the first job. We are going for a bit of a process of elimination here to eliminate each warning light one by one. Anto has purchased a new alternator as the old one looks cruddy, the battery keeps going flat and of course the battery light is on. It's going to be a bit of an up and down on the hoist job as the alternator is mounted fairly low. For better access we remove what we can like the engine bay wings, hoses and any electrical components in our way. That's nice and rubbery still. The alternator is encapsulated in a massive bracket and it too needs to come off to allow enough space for the alternator to slide up and out. Oh no. There was only two sold in Australia, I believe, at the cinema. Not regular version. All around the world got different versions. That white stuff is a bit of water mixed with oil. Halfway down. <laughs> Get the camera out of my face. <laughs> Yeah, well, we've undone all the bolts. They were all pretty accessible thanks to Hanger's uh, car lift, hoist. Um, so now let's see what the, the reassemble looks like. See if we can put it all back together just as easily. I'm guessing because there ain't no engine cover under here that all the elements just got to this um, alternator that's right at the bottom here because all the engine oil, all the road grime and weather 
has definitely caked it all. Supposedly it's only six years old, so. Yeah, people took this bracket completely off. That's why there was more bolts. So people take the alternator bracket off as well, because it's in the way. I wonder if I can get it past it without it. Wow. Millimeter perfect. It's given birth. That's all that road grime and dust and dirt. Get some head of hair. Mounting holes line up. How's the plug? The rear. Plug round. Around's good, that's a good result. Looks like we got the right one. They look like the same alternators. 503. Well, this is supposedly a genuine. So, I dare say this would be a genuine. Is it the OG, is it not? There's, it's currently a spider crawling out of it. So, it's probably living inside it. You can still keep this home, buddy. It's all yours. It's probably not a good sign for Family of spiders coming out of it. Is it? How does it survive? Clearly wasn't charging. Aircon belt. Aircon belt. And this was the way it came out. So alternator first, and then have it sitting on the cross member. Yeah, and then we install with that bracket there. Then we install the bracket and then put the alternator back onto the bracket. Hard to troubleshoot that when we're actually driving. While Anto is reassembling the cruise control system, um, one of the issues with the car when he first bought it was the uh, the amber oil light was on, and um, it, from what we have found out, the red one means low oil pressure. The amber one means uh, low oil level. There's actually a little sensor uh, on the bottom of the sump and uh, usually people have problems with that sensor and you can't actually get a replacement and people just bridge the, bridge the wires. Now, um, you, you saw the condition of the sump, it was all oily and, and crappy and you know, would, probably doesn't look like the, the sensor is working anyway. Uh, 
But what we have found out is by replacing the alternator, the battery light has now gone, of course, and that little amber oil level light has gone as well. So we think it was all probably linked, um, but that's a, that's a good thing. Is there any electrical components in the uh, cruise control section? Yeah, it's full on like, because it's actual motor driven. It's a real interesting system, I probably complicated. Because if that's the case... The, the accelerator cable's going into here, but then it like loops around, gets piggybacked and goes two ways. Back to controlling the engine and then controlling this. So then this can override that, which controls the engine by the sounds of things. But it's not like we can just turn on cruise control. And, oh, we can. We can raise the car into the air, <laughs> get it going to 40 kilometers per hour, try to engage. If it comes off the engine's hoist, though, oh. <laughs> the girls will kill us. That's a bit, that's a bit hardcore. Now that Anto has finished applying 300 Newton meters of torque to that 10 millimeter panel bolt, it's time to concentrate on the cooling system. The car ran somewhat cool, however the water looked gross and the radiator was in poor condition. We did notice the car took a long time to warm up, so we were wondering whether it even had a thermostat installed or the Japs engineered an amazing cooling system. With the system flushed, new thermostat installed and housing cleaned up and resealed, it's time to start the reassembly. This particular car has about 7 radiator cooling system hoses. That's a lot of areas for leaks so a new hose kit is a great idea. I don't know why the black hoses are always sold out. Red hoses are just as subtle. I mean, I can't see them, can you? All right, so we're nearly there with the cooling system. We drained the fluid, flushed it out. The thermostat housing has been cleaned up and regooped. Brand new thermostat in there and gasket. You can see old thermostat uh, was actually rusted open. The replacement aluminum radiator has been installed. Uh, we reused the coolant temperature sensor off the old one because the new one that uh, we had bought is the wrong plug. Uh, never mind. Uh, the thermo fans, we're deciding to use the OEM ones because they have a shroud and they obviously work. Uh, all we had to do is clearance out around the radiators mounting bosses for the thermo fans to attach to the radiator. So that's all done. 
All we've got to do now is fill her up and bleed the system and check for leaks. So if you enjoyed this video on Anto's MR2, make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on the next video where I'll be tackling that chassis sway bar mount repair. Thanks very much for sticking around for this one. See ya.